In just a few moments, that entire wall is going to magically open and there will be food on the other side. Um, but we really do want to get the microphone circulating, have a couple of questions for both panels in the few minutes. Uh, if we can get those out, there's a gentleman over here who has a question. While you're running those microphones over there, um, I'd just like to take the moderator's prerogative and ask uh, Spike Bowman, when uh, the public when do you think the public should be able to see uh, Weinberger's classified memorandum in aid of sentencing? And uh, Naval Intelligence, CIS, and the FBI have refused to release for public audit anything about the Jonathan Pollard investigation. The place where he had the photocopiers was the BIRD Foundation. Um, that wasn't just any organization. Why can't the public see a little bit more? Uh, I'm just curious why there's so much secrecy around this so many years later. When I wrote the affidavit for Weinberger, I knew that the Freedom of Information Act would be in, in high gear trying to get a copy of it. So I wrote it in such a way that you could see the, most of the, the words about damage and so forth, and they would be able to redact the exact thing that I was talking about. You can get a copy of that. The Justice Department has released that with, some, with blacked out things. But uh, I wouldn't, as far as when can you see the whole thing, I doubt if ever. All right. Um, question over here. My question is for Gareth Porter. Um, what does, does the administration really want a diplomatic uh, rapprochement with Iran? A few weeks ago, you wrote that the uh, administration put on the negotiating agenda the issue of Iran's ballistic uh, weapons, which had no business being there. You said that was a sop to the Israel lobby. But the recycling of this laptop evidence seems uh, like a graver problem with the negotiations. Is the U.S. serious? What's going on inside the government? Uh, this is a, a great question and a, a perplexing question, I think, because on one hand, we have um, indications from the Obama administration that the president certainly does not want war with Iran. I think he's been fairly consistent about that um, over the five years of his administration. Uh, on the other hand, he has taken a series of decisions from the beginning of his administration, which involved essentially a compromise or accommodation with the Israeli government, meaning the Netanyahu government, uh, on Iran policy. Uh, among other things, he certainly has given the Israelis in the past a veto power, uh, a veto over the substance of U.S. negotiating positions in the, in the negotiations with Iran, and of course, uh, that is not a complete veto power at all because we know that Israel wants no uh, agreement of any kind that would allow Iran to continue to have a nuclear program, essentially. Uh, so, so that uh, clearly is, it's not accepting uh, wholesale the Israeli position, but it is indeed uh, a willingness to give the Israelis a great deal of say over the, certainly the tactics used, the timing, uh, and, and to eliminate certain things or add certain things to the U.S. position at various times in the past. Well, this is a long-winded way of saying I see contradictions in this administration's policy. And uh, for me, the bottom line is I, I think this administration uh, lives in a bubble. Uh, it exists in a bubble, and that includes the president himself, his senior advisors on national security, uh, from the beginning of his, of his term in office to the present, all of whom have essentially accepted the false narrative that was created beginning in the Clinton administration, but particularly, of course, uh, the Bush administration and Israel have helped to create this uh, false narrative built around the documents that I referred to. The administration believes, uh, I'm quite sure, that those documents are genuine. Um, how, how they've managed to believe that is a very interesting story in itself, we won't get into. But I think that they live in a bubble, and therefore, 
uh, the situation is therefore very dangerous because they're not making policy on the basis of reality. Great. We've got a question in the back. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody on the panel as well as uh, the organizations that sponsored this. It by far is one of the best uh, uh, meetings I've seen in the last 30 years I've been uh, coming to Washington. I've been to the press club 50 times, and uh, thank you everyone for coming. It's unbelievable. Uh, Your question. And my question uh, is kind of twofold. First of all, uh, specifically to uh, um, our good, good uh, colleague and friend, uh, Ernie Gallo. Um, Ernie, uh, you've been fighting for years trying to get recognition uh, from the, uh, uh, the actual government to uh, investigate the USS Liberty. And have you ever uh, worked with Mark Perry? Because he would be an incredibly uh, a good advocate of your uh, objective. And the second question is, how do we as a group here form as, and uh, work as uh, effectively as an organization like APAC and create a coalition and get funding in the billions of dollars of rent, uh, from countries around the world to, to basically fight uh, these types of uh, corruption that have been going on in this country for the last uh, 100 plus years. So that's, uh, we, we are not fighting our domestic enemies very much. I, I've never seen it. All right, Ernie. Amen. What can I say? <laughs> I think um, a lot of people from different backgrounds are here. We've got people from APAC. We've got people from all sorts of press organizations. We have people who think critically, uncritically about this entire subject. But uh, the most important thing is to come and learn about it. And every single one of the sponsoring organizations puts out a wealth of information. We're all happy to have more subscribers and more people uh, pick up on that information and come to conferences. Is there another question? I got the mic. Um, hi, good morning, and thank you to everyone. I uh, second his uh, sentiments. Um, we've been hearing all about uh, the willingness of Israel, the country, and certain people within this country to serve Israel uh, in their interest rather than the United States' interests. Um, to the extent of what we would call uh, treachery, traitor uh, be type behavior. Um, why is it such a leap if we know that uh, certain elements of the um, neocon group lied their way into Iraq and lied their way, wanted to lie their way into Iran? Why is it such a stretch for us as a body not to consider the possibility with the extensive evidence that it is on hand that Israel had a major hand in 9-11. Steve Snagoski, do you want to take that one? Well, I didn't really, in, in my presentation, I did not say Israel had a hand in 9-11. However, you know, there are some, let's say, at mo you know, may maybe coincidences, but, you know, Israeli agents were near uh, the, the, you know, across the, across the Hudson from when the, uh, when the attack took place on the, uh, uh, on the towers and also ne lived near the, uh, uh, some of the uh, terrorists in uh, Florida. Uh, I don't think that was investigated, you know, sufficiently. It looked like, you know, but, you know, I don't know if the Israelis were behind it. They may have, it seems reasonable that they may have known a lot about it and didn't tell that to people who would act to prevent it in the United States. But nothing, I can't really, it looks like that was all, all the evidence has disappeared, you know. I think, uh, uh, even Fox, I believe, one of their channels had something, a uh, little episode on it. Uh, they destroyed it or something. Many, after. many authors up here yeah, so, love getting so, these So I, you know, I just don't, you know, I just don't, you know, I, I, I don't claim to be any expert. I did mention that at one, you know, one time, but it looks like the information that existed early, nothing has been developed since then. Great. We're a little behind schedule, so we're going to do a lot of socializing. No social media, and lunch is served. Do not leave the building. It's here for you.